If you are a gardener in the Central Valley of California, this is the episode for you. If you're in a different area of the world or the U.S., there are still quite a few tips that will apply to you today, but I wanted to speak to those that are in a very similar climate as I am because this episode is somewhat urgent in a way um, just of what's going on right now with our weather and fall planting and just kind of some gardening myths across the board. So uh, there's all kinds of great information that's going to be in today's episode, and so let's get into today's episode. If you're new here, my name is Audrey Crawford and I am a California gardener in zone nine. I teach you the tried and true methods of gardening in our climate and break down complicated gardening advice into simple and actionable steps so that you can take action and grow your best garden yet this season. So if you've been following along with me for a while now, I started this podcast back in April and it's kind of crazy that it's already been that long, um, you know, not quite a year, but it feels like a long time in my head. And if you've been following along, you may have noticed I took a break Um, an an unannounced break because I didn't realize I was going to be taking a break. Life got busy. I have a two-year-old son and a husband and just with life and family, um, things just got busy and the podcast got pushed to the back burner. So my goal with this show was to post every other week. And unfortunately that turned into a two month break. So hopefully from here on out, I will be able to pick back up the frequency that I was posting at before. But if not, just know that the show is not coming to an end. Um, There just may or may not be bigger breaks in between. So hopefully we'll see as the holiday season comes up. Hopefully we can keep up the pace. But um, I always want to share on this show because I'm so passionate about having the ability to be able to reach those that are in a very similar climate. And what's really cool with this podcast is that I've been able to reach a lot of really local gardeners, which I love. And so the reason why I say that this episode was somewhat urgent is because we are in October and according to most planting schedules, it's going to say that it's too late for you to plant a fall garden, but that is just not the case in the Central Valley. Um, So I was looking back to some pictures and videos from last year and I was planting my garden basically the same exact time, even a little bit later. And the thing is here in the Central Valley, we don't have a very harsh winter. Um, We do have some freezing temperatures, but they usually don't last that many days. And so even if we plant our fall crops right now, they may not mature before winter hits, but during the winter, the crops will just stay somewhat stagnant and then we'll get our harvest later in the year. So it will, you know, for something, for example, like a head of cauliflower, we're likely not going to get the harvest before winter hits, but throughout the winter, the plant will just kind of stay somewhat stagnant. And then as the weather starts to warm up again, the crop will finish maturing and that head of cauliflower will form. And it might not, might, it might even be possible that you get your harvest sooner, but I just want you to know that you're not too late to plant. So my goal this year was actually to get everything in the ground in the beginning of September. Uh, my husband and I were getting ready to go on our anniversary trip at the end of September. So my goal was to have everything planted and in the ground prior to leaving. But unfortunately... Um, I just got busy planning for the trip and I didn't get anything planted. And then when we got back from our trip, this whole last week, which was the first week of October was in the hundred degree temperatures again. And so it actually kind of worked out in my favor that things weren't in the ground. They would have likely survived and there probably wouldn't have been any issues, but it just kind of goes to show that our fall is a little bit unpredictable and it was really warm. I wasn't expecting it to be hundred degrees in October. And so I'm going to get everything planted this coming week. And everything's going to be fine. Um, You know, I'm a little bit later than I hoped, but like I said, the crops will just continue surviving through the winter. And there's a lot of areas that just don't give you that opportunity. If you have lots of snow or a hard freeze for, you know, weeks in a row, it's not likely that your crops are going to survive through the winter. So for those people, you know, in in much harsher winter climates, it's much more important to really pay attention to your fall planting dates. But if you are like me and you haven't planted yet, you have plenty of time. And so that was my urgent message for those of you in a similar climate as I am. And now I just kind of want to go over some things that you can do that you can do now to prepare for the spring and summer garden season to come. And then I kind of want to go over a few things that I did over this last year that helped my garden to have success. So this is kind of where no matter where you're listening from, these tips should apply. And so... This last summer was, or, you know, that just passed 
was brutally hot. We had pretty much 100 plus degrees every day of July and into August. And it was just really hot. It was not enjoyable to be out in the garden and having a two-year-old son, I can't take him out there in those temperatures. And so my garden was somewhat neglected, but surprisingly it grew incredibly well. And I, I know for a fact actually that I had the best tomato crop that I've ever had. And a few things went into that. So my very first thing that um, was in place that helped my garden to grow successfully was the fact that I have everything set up on irrigation and a timer. And I don't want that to sound fancy. It's, um, it was, you know, not an expensive setup. Um, but it was at an initial investment of about a hundred to $200 for my entire garden. And I have a really big garden. So if you have a smaller garden, you can probably get this all set up for about 50 bucks. Um, the one expensive part, which always irritates me is the garden timers that I like to use are kind of expensive. I like to have the digital timers that have multiple zones so that you can water different parts of your garden at different times so that you can maintain good water pressure. Those usually run about 50 bucks, but the actual irrigation line and the emitters and all of that, it's actually very inexpensive. So I purchase all of my supplies at a local store called Exeter Irrigation. If you're local, check them out. It's, they're really great. You can also go to um, Fruit Grower Supply, or if you're in a different area, I'm sure you have a similar irrigation store, or you can buy online. And so one of the cool things is that I actually created an entire course walking you through the process of setting up irrigation. I go through the entire you know, setup process, how to fix things if they, you know, get clogged, all the parts that you need to buy. I give you the exact part list of everything that I use. And I found a store online that lets you that where you can purchase everything that I personally use and recommend. So if you're a gardener in an area that doesn't have access to a good irrigation store, you could buy through a store online called Drip Depot. Anyways, I set up this course to help home gardeners set up their home irrigation. And having that is just truly a game changer because I can't imagine going out to my garden daily to water when it's hundred plus degrees and my garden is so big, it's nearly impossible to water everything by hand and your garden has to have water, especially when it's so hot. And so having that set up was truly a game changer. And so my goal for you or my tip for you now, if you don't have irrigation set up is to get this set up in the fall right now, when the weather's cool is the perfect time to get it set up because it's enjoyable to be outside. It's not enjoyable to set this up, you know, once summer comes and it's hundred degrees outside. So if you have the time now, now would be the time to get that going or at least, you know, plan it out and maybe you even get it set up in late winter, early spring before you plant your spring garden. But that really helped my garden to grow well, because even when I wasn't out there, uh, my crops were getting watered. Everything was, you know, it may, you know, I had more weeds at times than I, that I wish I wouldn't have had, but weeds aren't a make or break in the garden. You know, it's not nice to have them and it doesn't really look that great. However, it is crucial to have water. And so being that my crops were being watered, even though I wasn't out there, it was very helpful. And one of the other things is at a, as a member in my membership, you have access to that course for free. So um, I think I've mentioned this in the show before, but in case you are not familiar, I have a membership. It's called Audrey's Little Farm Academy. And within that membership, I also have a program specifically for zone nine gardeners. It's called the zone nine garden club. And in the membership, you have access to everything. So whether you join the Academy or the zone nine garden club, it's basically all combined. I just have that portion separated for the zone nine gardeners to kind of keep things separate and more helpful, but you can start a 14 day free trial. And that, the link for that will be in the description. And so you can start your trial and go through that course in that 14 days if you want, but that was very helpful. The other thing that really helped during the summer garden is that I have a lot of my crops growing directly in the ground. So here in the central Valley, most areas tend to have pretty great soil, which makes sense because the central Valley is one of the largest farming areas in the entire world. And your in-ground soil is beneficial because it holds on to moisture, which means you don't have to water as often and it's cheaper. So if you're starting a garden from scratch or you just want to put plants in a different area this coming season, you don't always have to grow in containers or in raised beds. You can plant things directly in the ground and it's likely that they're going to actually grow better. So I really love growing directly in the ground. Um, especially if you're, if you've been working on keeping your soil amended. So it's still really important to add some compost at the beginning of each season, or even just once a year. 
Um, it's also nice to add organic materials on top of your soil, such as mulched up leaves or grass clippings that will act as a mulch. And then over time it actually breaks down and it improves the structure and the fertility of your soil as well. And so consider growing in the ground if you are currently just growing in containers or in pots. Um, growing in containers and pots actually here in the Central Valley, especially during the summer, is almost useless because it just gets so hot. It's really hard to keep your plants alive or they're just, or you're going to just really have to water a lot. Um, so container gardening can be really tough here in the summer. The other thing that really helped my summer garden grow well this year was that I, we built, I say I, but my family and I, my family, my husband and my dad helped and a couple of friends. Um, it was kind of a fun family day project, but we built a really huge cattle panel trellis. It's about a hundred feet long. Um, I think I've posted some pictures of it on social media if you haven't seen, and I also plan on getting a video up about it, uh, hopefully sometime soon. Anyways, the cattle panel worked out really well because I, I grew all my tomatoes on one side of it. And then on the opposite side, I was able to grow tomatillos, cucumbers, green beans, you know, anything that grows up a trellis, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, and having all of those crops up off the ground really helped the crops grow well, just because they're not sprawling all over the ground. You're not having to worry about stepping on them. It keeps things more cleaned up and it prevents pest issues because the crops aren't just on the ground and it makes it easier to spot any pests that might, you know, have hatched. It's really easy to see them when the leaves are growing up the trellis. You're not having to pick up the plants and look on the undersides of the leaves. And so if you can grow things vertically, that will really help the success of your garden. It's also a really great way to maximize space. And so I definitely recommend getting some either cattle panel trellises set up or even just vertical upright trellises where you can start growing some crops up off the ground. And as far as some things to work on to help you out in the future gardening season, so whether it be this fall or even you know, spring and summer is to start planning now, um, you know, things that you need to get put in place. So maybe that's the trellises, maybe that's the irrigation system. Maybe it's that you need to start amending your in-ground soil. If you don't have decent soil to start with, amending your soil is truly a work in progress, but it's not impossible. It's just something that takes time and you have to put work into it. So you can't expect to just add some amendments to your soil today and have better soil next week. But if you start working on adding in organic materials now, each year, your garden will slowly get better and better and better. And the soil truly is the heart of the garden. If you have poor soil, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a successful crop of vegetables. You know, your, your plants have to be planted in good soil to grow well. And of course, you can, you know, give your plants fertilizer and that's kind of a quick fix, but it doesn't fix the problem if your soil is, is of poor quality. And what I am really excited about is that right now inside the membership, we are doing an entire series on soil. So I've brought in Robert Pavlis, who is an expert gardener and author. He just has some really incredible information out there. He's wrote, written multiple books on soil science, microbes, um, composting, uh, plant science. He's just an incredible gardener and he's always my go-to when I want to have a deep dive into these topics. And so I have brought him into the membership and he's doing a series right now on soil. And if you are a member, you can join in on the or on the, these live sessions in real time and ask questions. And you also get access to the replays. So no matter when you're listening to this, if you join as a member, you'll have access to the soil series. And the first session was all about understanding soil. So the microbes in the soil, just basically what soil is, the different components of soil, the ideal you know, mixture that you want in your garden. And the next session was all about actually testing your soil. So figuring out what type of soil you have, whether it be, um, you know, heavy in sand or in clay, or if it's the perfect combination of sand, silt, and clay, um, figuring out, you know, how much organic material is in your soil, whether or not you should do tests from a lab, some DIY tests that you can do. It was just a really helpful talk. And then our session next week, if you're listening in real time, is going to be all about amending your soil. So say you have really heavy clay, he's going to be going over how to fix that over time. And then um, if you're starting from scratch and filling raised beds, he's going to go over the ideal mixture to use. It's going to be a really great talk. So as a member, you have access. And if you join at a later date, you'll have access to the replays. 
So that is coming up. That is something that you could um, start working on right now would, would be to start amending your soil. And that's going to get you set up for success for every garden to come. And the other thing I really love to do in the winter time is to evaluate what happened over the last year. You know, what went well, what maybe stressed you out, what didn't grow well. You know, it could just be a combination of all kinds of things. So I know for myself, um, I, I did this last year too. And one of the peppers that I actually love growing is shishito peppers. Um, they're, they're a little, they're mild. I like to saute them in some olive oil and teriyaki sauce and garlic, and they're just great as an appetizer, but they're kind of tiny and they're time consuming to harvest. And I planted so many plants. I planted way more than our family needed. And so, and not that that's a bad thing, but I just, I felt guilty every time I went out to the garden and some of these peppers were going to waste and they were just so time consuming to harvest. And being that it was so hot this summer, I never wanted to be out there harvesting for hours. And so I just know for myself, it's like, we would have been totally fine with probably just one plant, if not maybe two at the most, but I had six and it's just way too many. And so that was just some, a good note for me to write down of saying, you know, I don't need next year. If I go to the nursery and I buy a six pack of shishito peppers, I need to give four away to a friend. I don't need to plant all six. And another thing on a, on a brighter note was that my tomatoes grew absolutely incredible. I was so happy with all of the tomato varieties I grew and I'll go over them really quick. So I grew sun gold, uh, Juliet, butter boy, early girl, Roma's San Marzano's and beef master. So all of, out of those, um, I just did one Juliet and one sun gold, which the sun gold is a little orange cherry tomato. It's absolutely incredible. It's super sweet. It's so delicious. And it, it keeps on growing. So I talked about how I grew the cattle panel or how we built the cattle panel arch. The plant is going all the way over the other side. It's really, really cool, but there's so many cherry tomatoes. You would never need more than one plant. The Juliet, kind of the same thing. It's a, it's bigger than a cherry tomato, but it's smaller than a Roma. Um, but it's a really great tomato. It's great for salads. Um, we even did, we actually canned some of them even. And so it, one plant produced so many, but then when it came to the early girls and the better boys, San Marzano's, Roma's, all of those, um, I think I did four to six of each variety, which I know is a lot of tomatoes, but we were able to can so many batches of tomatoes this year. We made tomato sauce or spaghetti sauce, sorry. And we did an old family recipe called chili sauce. And we just were able to harvest so many tomatoes and make so many great things this year. And so those varieties just really thrive here in the Central Valley. And most of them are actually hybrids. And I know people want to grow heirlooms. And the, the nice thing about heirlooms is that you can save the seeds. However, I would rather buy a packet of seeds for a few dollars and have successful tomatoes than be able to save the seeds for my own tomatoes. Um, hybrids grow really well here in the central Valley where it's really hot and there's nothing wrong with a hybrid. It's not a GMO crop. It is just a cross between two different varieties of tomatoes. And then that plant itself is its own variety. So if you plant, you know, say you save the seeds from an early girl tomato, the seeds you plant will not produce an early girl tomato. And that's the only downside. They, they still taste great, but I think the most important thing is that the plants grow and produce like crazy. So if you've had trouble with your tomatoes in the past and you live in a really hot climate, specifically here in the Central Valley, you know, I know in other areas, certain varieties probably will do better or some of these might not do as well for you. But for here in the Central Valley, um, the Early Girl, Better Boys, Roma's, Sun Gold, Juliet, and the San Marzano's all did incredible. And in fact, actually, the San Marzano's, they didn't produce as well as the others, but they were, they're a really great canning tomato, which is why I grew them. So we got some really great crops to can, but just as far, if I could only choose one or two of those varieties, it would be the early girl and the better boy. And so that's kind of the, um, you know, just looking over, excuse me, uh, looking over, you know, what did well, what didn't do well, keeping note of that. Um, I know as much as you want to believe that you're going to remember next year, you probably won't. So use this time to just write down the things that you need to remember for next year. You know, the more records and notes that you can keep of each year's garden, the better each future garden will be. And so just use this time for that and then use the time, you know, during the winter to plan out maybe some things that you want to try next year. You know, there, it's always fun to test things out. Um, right now, I know as I was talking about, you know, feeling a little bit late on planting my fall garden, I want to... Um, now kind of jump forward to the spring 
and also let you know that, uh, you know, our planting dates typically show to plant, you know, in early to mid-March. And that's for us here in the Central Valley of California. Usually our average last frost date is around March 15th. And so most planting schedules are going to tell you to plant all of your summer crops around that date. However, this last year, we had a really cool spring and it stayed colder. You know, you know, we just kept having some colder days well into April. And so I held off on my summer garden. And the best thing to do if you live in a warmer climate and you have a long growing season is to plant too late versus too early for your summer garden because it's the opposite and summer crops can't tolerate cold temperatures. Um, if in fact, if it, you know, you plant little seedlings and it freezes, it's likely going to kill the crops or it's going to stunt their growth. And so you're better off to be too late planting than too early. And we have such a long growing season. Like I said, I, um, or maybe I haven't said this, sorry. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm talking out loud and I thought I said this, but I still have tomatoes that are producing like crazy right now in October. And if I didn't say that now I'm saying it, I have a brand new batch of beautiful, huge green tomatoes that are going to be ready to harvest in the next few weeks. And we're in October. And so, um, you know, it wouldn't have mattered if I planted those tomato plants in July, I would still be getting tomatoes right now. And so I just want you to know that, you know, if you plant your summer garden in May or even in June, you are not too late. So that's a really cool thing of living in this area. We have such a long growing season for our warm season crops. You could be late. Um, a lot of friends of mine that planted too early kind of had a stunted, not so successful summer garden. I didn't plant until late April and then even early May for a lot of my crops. And when I say planted, that was just my first planting. I typically try to have a few successions of different crops throughout the summer just to keep harvest going. But my first planting was not until late April and early May and things grew really, really well. And that was just because I wanted to wait for sure to make sure the weather wasn't going to cool off again and be unexpectedly, unexpectedly cold. And that's just overall a better situation for your summer crops. And so just think about that as we go into the new year and you plan for your summer garden. And lastly, if you have not checked out the membership, I would really love for you to get a free trial, try out 14 days for free. We have just a lot of incredible resources in there and it's just a great way for us to connect further. Um, I'm in there daily answering questions. We have a really great community and all kinds of great courses and guides. And, um, my favorite thing right now is that series of, um, or the soil series. And so go ahead and check that out in the description and I hope to see you inside. And if not, I will see you in a future episode in a few weeks. Have a great day.